All right. In today's video, we're going to talk about our homework EOC review number two. We're talking about three different standards here. You know, you can always look up the standards on Google to see more example questions if you like. But these questions are talking about linear equations and solving linear equations. All right. Our first question, four more than twice a number X is 12. Well, looking at this, I have my four more than twice. So four more than twice a number. So two X is 12. So equal to 12. Write an equation that represents the situation. Well, I just wrote my equation. Then they want us to determine the number for x. So they want us to find x. So we're going to take this equation, 4 plus 2x equals 12. We're going to subtract 4 from both sides. And we get 2x is equal to 8. Since I'm out of room, I'm going to go up here. 2x is equal to 8. So I need to divide by 2 and divide by 2. And x is equal to 4. So that's my number for x. In question number 2, we have Kendra has a babysitting business that she earns $6 per hour. She already has $50. And she wants to earn enough money to buy a new phone for $350. First, we need to write an equation that represents how many hours she needs to babysit to earn the money to pay for the phone. So I can take that $6 per hour, so 6H, plus the $50 she already has, and that's going to equal $350. So to solve this for H, I'm going to subtract 50 from both sides. And I get 6H is equal to 300. And then I need to divide by 6 and divide by 6. And I find that H is equal to 50. So Kendra has to work 50 hours in order to earn enough money to buy her phone. I hope she doesn't have to pay taxes on that phone because she won't have enough. All right, question number three, solve for x. So we have 2x minus 5 equals 10. We first need to get rid of this 5. So we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. And we get 2x is equal to 5. Then you're going to divide by 2 and divide by 2. And x is equal to 2.5. Number 4, solve for a. So we have 2 times 2a plus 3 minus 6 equals 5a plus 2. So what we need to do is we need to first distribute this 2 to every term in the equation. And we're going to get 4a, because 2 times 2a is 4a. 2 times 3 is going to be plus 6. And then we're going to have minus 6. And that's going to equal 5a plus 2. Well, if I have a positive 6 and a negative 6, that's going to cancel out. So it's going to become 0. And I'm left with 
4a is equal to 5a plus 2. Now I want to focus on moving this 5a to the other side of the equation. And if it's positive on the right, I'm going to subtract it to get it to the left. So I'm going to subtract 5a and subtract 5a. And I get negative a because 4 minus 5 is a negative 1. So negative a is equal to 2. But I don't want to solve for negative a. I want positive a. So I have to divide or multiply by negative 1. I'm going to divide by negative 1. And I find that a is equal to a negative 2. Question 5. Solve for x. So if 2x plus 9 is less than 10, the first thing I need to do is subtract 9 from both sides. When I subtract 9 from both sides, I'm going to get 2x not equal because I have a less than sign. 2x is less than 1. Then I'm going to divide by 2, just like I do for any other equation. And I get x is less than 1 half. Number 6 over here, I'm not quite sure why that number moved. Sorry, I can drop back in. Solve for t. Okay, we're going to solve for this letter T here. We have 5 minus 3T. 3T is greater than or equal to 14. The first thing I need to do is move this positive 5, and I need to move it to the other side of the inequality sign. To do that, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. And then I'm left with negative 3 t is greater than or equal to 9. Now I need to divide by negative 3 and divide by negative 3. However, if I'm dividing an inequality by a negative number, I'm going to remember that that sign is going to flip. So when it was greater than, now it's going to be less than or equal to new sign. So I'm going to have t is now less than or equal to a negative 3. Because 9 divided by negative 3 is a negative 3. So that is my answer. Number 7. Number seven is an example of a literal equation, or when we did notes on it, we called it rearranging equations. And we need to solve for W. Well, W is being multiplied by L and H. And if L and H are being multiplied by W, we need to do the inverse. And the inverse of multiplication is division. So we're gonna divide by L in H, and I'm going to make my L look cursive just because it looks like a 1 if I don't. So when I divide by L in H, and I divide by L in H on the other side of my equation, because whatever I do to the left, I must do to the right, I get V is equal to, silly me, I get V divided by L times H is equal to W. All we're doing is trying to isolate the term that they've given. And if, don't forget that really if there is no sign between your variables, it's being multiplied. And the inverse of multiplication, inverse means opposite, 
the opposite of multiplication is division. So that's why I divided. Okay, in question eight, it asks us to solve for x. Well, this is my x term. So that, that means is I need to get rid of every other term in that equation so that I have an x equals. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract b times y from both sides. So I'm going to have a times x is equal to c minus b times y. Now I still don't have this x by itself. That a is being multiplied by the x. So to get rid of the a, I need to divide by a on both sides of the equation. So I then have x is equal to c minus b times y divided by a. And that is my solution. And this is called, in Math Nation, they call it rearranging formulas. If you want to look up more videos or support on this topic, you can look up literal equations. All right, question nine. Sophia wants to rent an apartment. She visits apartment A which charges $100 a month. Oh, sorry, that's a 100 one-time deposit. And they charge $400 for rent per month. She also visits apartment B, which charges $500 for a deposit, but only $350 per month in rent. We need to first write an equation we then are going to solve our equation, our inequality. So we're looking for how many months it would take for the total to be paid less, to total paid to be less for apartment B. So we're looking for B to be less than A. So first I'm looking at apartment A. And apartment A is equal to a $100 one-time deposit plus $400 a month. And apartment B is equal to a $500 deposit plus $350 per month. So this is A. And this is B. And I want B to be less than A. So I'm going to set up my equation to be 500 plus 350M is going to be less than 100 plus 400M. Now all I have to do is start simplifying to solve. So I'm going to want to bring my 350 over to the other side. So I'm going to subtract 350 from both sides. Please ignore that writing that I'm doing here. So I'm going to subtract 350M from both sides. And I get 500 is less than 100 plus 50M. I'm now going to subtract 100 from both sides. When I subtract 100 from both sides, I'm going to get 400 
is less than 50 m. My final step is to divide by 50 and divide by 50 because I don't want to know about 50 m. I want to know about m, the cost per month, or how many months it's going to take for it to be less than. And 400 divided by 50 is 8. So 8 has is less than the number of months. So at 9 months, apartment B will cost less. The reason why it's not eight months is because at eight months they are equal. But we don't want to know when they're equal. We want to know when it's going to be less than for apartment B. So our correct and final answer is nine months. Eight months they would be equal. At nine months it costs less. All right, question 10. Paige has a membership to a new music website. It costs $5 per month, and then each song costs 10 cents to purchase. Write an equation using S to represent the number of songs that she purchases if she spends $8.20 one in one month. How many songs did she buy? So it costs $5 per month, but she only used it for one month. So we don't have to add a variable to this. It's just gonna be five. It costs 10 cents per song. So it's going to be plus 10 S because it told me to use the variable s for the number of songs. And that's actually a point 0.10, because it's 10 cents, not $10. That would be a lot. And she spent, so it's equal to $8.20. So how many songs did she buy? Well, the first step, I'm going to subtract five from both sides. And I'm going to get point 0.10s is equal to $3.20. Well, I don't want to know how much point 0.10s is. I want to know what s is all by itself. So since Point one zero is being multiplied by that s. I'm going to divide by point one zero on both sides. And so that is equal to, I didn't want to write it like that. So that means s is equal to 32. Paige bought 32 songs and spent $8.22, or 20 cents. So 32. Number 11, solve for the value of x. So we have 3x plus 25 is equal to 2 thirds multiplied by 6x minus 15. All right, so to solve this, we are going to multiply our 2 thirds times 6x first. So 2 thirds multiplied by 6. Six times two is 12, divided by three is equal to four. So this is going to become three X plus 25 is equal to four X. And then we have to multiply two thirds times a negative 15, divided by one, 15 over one. Two times negative 15 is a negative 30 divided by 3 is equal to a negative 10. So that's going to be minus 10. 
So now we have 3x plus 25 is equal to 4x minus 10. I suggest taking your 3x and moving it to the other side with the 4x so we don't have negatives. So we're going to subtract 3x from both sides. And then we get 25 is equal to x minus 10 because 4x minus 3x is x. We're then going to add 10 to both sides and we get 35 is equal to x. In our final equation number 12, this is another literal or rearranging equations. The distance of an object, the distance an object has traveled when starting at an initial velocity is given by the equation d equals vit plus one half at squared. In the equation, vi represents the initial velocity, t represents the time traveled, and a represents the acceleration. Solve the equation for A. So we want to get that A isolated. Well, we have a lot of things going on here. We have this VI. We have a T here. We have a T squared here. And then we have the one half. So if I have D is equal to v sub i t plus one half a times t. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out that t and I'm going to be left with v sub i plus one half a times t. And that's equal to d. The reason why I factored out that T right here is because I don't want to deal with a squared term when I'm trying to do literal equations. So the first thing I'm going to do is factor it out. So then I can divide by T on both sides. So I'm going to have D divided by T and that's going to equal V sub I plus one half a times t. Now I want to focus on getting rid of this v sub i. So I'm going to subtract it because it's positive on the right. So if I subtract v sub i, I have to subtract it on the other side. So now I'm going to have d divided by t minus v sub i is equal to one half a times t. Well, now I'm going to multiply both sides by two so I can get rid of the fraction. So now I'm going to have two times d divided by t minus and what I can do actually is I'm going to have minus v sub i to v sub i and that's equal to a times t. The last thing I'm going to do is divide by t And when I divide by t, I get a is equal to 2 times d minus 2 times v i all over t squared. Number 12.
for the horrible example of rearranging formulas, I do not think they will have one quite that difficult on the algebra EOC. So if that one stresses you out, don't worry about it. Worry about solving literal equations and being able to do systems of equations like number seven, I mean not systems, but rearranging formulas like number seven and number eight. These are going to be more prevalent on the EOC than an example like number 12. All right, that's it for today. Have a good day.